In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use the 4th Armory template and mandrel to make 69 caliber buck and ball cartridges. The dimensions for this template come from the 1850 U.S. Ordnance Manual. So to get started, we're going to need paper. So the paper that I like to use is just masking paper that is available at any big box home improvement store. It has the consistency of newsprint and it's just an unbleached plain brown paper and it matches many surviving historical examples of this kind of ammunition. So to get started, we're gonna use the template to cut out some of this paper. Now you can cut out more than one piece at a time simply by doubling up or tripling up or whatever uh, your paper. You can probably do up to 10 pieces at a time. So the first thing you want to do is get your razor knife, make sure it's a sharp new blade, keep your fingers out of the way, and then just cut the paper using the template. And just like that, we've cut out some template or some some cartridge pieces for making a cartridge. So the next step in making a buck and ball 69 caliber cartridge is to choke the end of the cartridge. And so for choking, I've made up a simple choking workbench. And this, uh, this is just a, a scrap piece of wood that I've affixed a dowel in. I've tied a piece of string to it and tied it to another little short piece of dowel that I can pull on, and that's a choking cord. So to get started, we're gonna position our cartridge paper, like so, and we're gonna take our former and we're gonna position it like so, where the nose of the former is pointing to the long end of the trapezoid. You wanna leave about a half inch of space here at the end between the end of the former and the end of the paper, edge of the paper. And then we just roll up the cartridge. This is just like any US style cartridge. So this is what it looks like. You can see the end of the mandrel down there and how the paper extends a little bit beyond the end of it. And then we're gonna take our choking cord and you're gonna wrap it one time around the edge of the end of the cartridge paper. You're gonna put your finger over the end and pull it tight. And that's going to give you what looks like a little flower on the end of your cartridge. And now we're going to take our string, and this is three-ply linen cord, same kind of thing they would have used in period. We'll wrap around the crimp one time, pull it nice and tight, and then you secure it with two half hitches. And then you can press that down. So here's where it gets a little bit different from most uh, cartridges where you tie off the end of the tube like this. Instead of cutting both ends, we're only gonna cut the free end. All right, so now we have a cartridge that is still on the end of its piece of string. And this is exactly what the ordinance manual says to do. It says, don't cut the string until you're finished making the cartridge. So what's interesting here is how do you tie your knots in the different segments of the cartridge if there's no free end to use? Well, we'll see that in just a second. So the first thing to do is to add your buckshot. So this is 0.31 diameter uh, buckshot that I just purchased. It's a swaged round ball. You can also cast it, of course. And you're gonna want three pieces of buckshot down the hatch. And you're gonna take the flat end of the former and put it down there on top of those three and push that kind of tight. All right, so the next step is we have to tie off that, seg that compartment of buckshot. And how do we do it if we have no free end with which to tie a knot? Well, it's really very easy. All you do is you make a loop like this. So I'll do that again. 
So you take your string and you make a loop. So this, the string that's on top is gonna go on first. So you're gonna flip it and down you go. And then you're gonna pull it tight at the bottom of where the buckshot is. And just that easy, you've now segmented off the buckshot. So now we're gonna remove the cartridge and we're gonna get our round ball. 0.650 diameter round ball down the hatch. Former goes back into the cartridge to hold the ball in place. And now to finish, you need two half hitches. Well, how do you do that? This only produced one half hitch. Well, very easy. We do the same thing. We make our loop and then you loop the loop. So I'll do that again. You make your loop and then you loop your loop. And then you flip the loop over. We come down to the bottom where the round ball is and you pull your string nice and tight. And now you've segmented off the round ball. And now we can cut our string and there's no waste, okay? So unlike uh, other mechanisms where you see people tying these things and they're trying to work with two free ends, you know, you gotta start with just the right length of string. And if it's too long, you end up with waste. And if it's too short, you can't finish your cartridge. And the other thing you'll notice here is there's only one piece of string that jumps from segment to segment. And that's very much what we see on many surviving examples. So I think this is probably uh, the correct way to go about it. And as you can see, it's super fast. If you try to tie these with two free ends where you make a half hitch, and you flip it over and you do another hitch and then you come down and tie a hitch and flip it over and tie another hitch, boy, that's tedious. That would never fly in the production environment of an of a ammunition factory. But as you can see, that is super fast to do. And even for buckshot, and it's a different template, so we'll have another video for the buckshot, uh, even if there were just many segments, it's longer to put the shot in than it is to tie the string. So I think that's pretty much how it works. To finish the cartridge off, you remove the mandrel, and for a percussion uh, musket, it was 110, uh, 110 grains of musket powder. And to complete the cartridge, we simply pinch the sides so we feel that where the end of the where the gunpowder is starting, and then you crease those, fold the tail over, and then we fold the sides of the tail in on itself to the middle, and we give that a good crease, fold back on the cartridge body, and then down along the side of the cartridge body, and give that a good crease there to kind of hold its shape. So that is how we make a 69 caliber buck and ball US cartridge.